Hey, what's up, Big Rat? Three, ten, back at it. Um, gotta say, pretty good raw. I do have some criticisms, cause I'm tired of some people write. Sometimes I do, uh, I do criticize TNA and ROH, and I do think WWE is very bad. I don't criticize WWE as much as I should. And I actually found, I wasn't purposely looking for it, but I found some stuff that I should criticize. I'm not gonna make another 11 minute video. I'm trying to make as little of those as possible. Okay, so Edge and Cena come out. They both give really funny promos. I love how Edge goes to five year and says, You're wrong, you're wrong. I did it, I did it. And Edge, Cena basically tells Edge, You can hide, but I will find you. Hinting a possible Cena Edge match, which I, I guess I'm not that upset with, but that would mean either Cena going to SmackDown, which I really don't want. See, even though, because Cena is raw. If he goes on SmackDown, they'll be in like two months, he's going to think, oh shit, we fucked up, and they're just going to bring him back to raw. So SmackDown appearance is going to be pointless. Um, Shane McMahon announces an unsanctioned fight against Orton. Um, and then Priceless defeats, Priceless and, uh, and Regal defeat Punk and Crime Time when DiBiase, instead of doing just uh, the Russian leg sweep with, his, with the Million Dollar Dream, he sort of brings the Million Dollar Dream, Picks him up, turns, smashes to the ground like a rock bottom, except not by putting your shoulders and head on the guy's elbow, but like actually giving him a million dollar dream, lifting him up and giving him a rock bottom or something. It's called the dream streak. Piper comes out with Jericho. They give a pretty good promo. Piper gives a, a great promo from the heart, and Jericho, of course, beats him up. Uh, Rourke is supposed to come back next week. Because they're saying that he was on WWE television because his publicist thought that if he was, they wouldn't give him the Oscar, which really is unfair. But what are we going to do about it? So he, since the Oscars are this Sunday, he might come back next week, win or lose. Um, then Noble, I believe he's getting a push. I know Coffee, you especially, I know you love him. This is kind of a push. He's actually talking about being in WrestleMania, you know, fighting with Kane. It's like back then when he was just stuck in the Cruiserweight division and didn't do anything. So, I think this is actually kind of a push. Look at him. He's on Raw. He's been feuding with Kane. He's talking about going to WrestleMania, achieving his moments. So, yeah, I know he got buried by Kane, but still, it's Kane. It's, it's a kind of a push, whether you like it or not. So, I think he maybe isn't that underrated. Um, pissed about. We all criticized TNA a couple weeks ago when they gave us one match in one hour, and the match really sucked between Hernandez and Sting. It was like a long time ago. WWE only gave us one and like a quarter. They gave us the priceless match. And then they gave Kane versus Jamie Noble, which was 16 seconds according to Jerry King Lawrence in one hour. So if you guys consider that as bad, come on. WWE, you should expect more from WWE. So WWE really should have given you uh, what I call one and a quarter match. It should be like one and one sixteenth of a match in one hour. So that's why WWE dropped the ball there. Or fumbled, as Jamie Noble said. Um... Then JBL and HBK are going to have a match. Win a fight to the Undertaker. I, I, I don't like them going that route. Just like, oh yeah, who's going to try to end a streak? They should have done something like Undertaker talking to JBL about respect and about earning your own way. And never should have had to done that in the first place. Why did they have to say, oh yeah, fine, let's fight. Whoever wins, wins. At first, it was a JBL Taker. I even wrote that on the thing. JBL versus Taker. No. Taker, Shawn Michaels, yes. But Vince knows that we want this. He should be able to give us HBK, Taker. Um, Ray fights Mike Knotts. He beats him with the schoolboy. Is this feud over already? I'm getting really tired of it. People say it has no point. I I thought the I know Mike Knotts said he doesn't have a problem with Ray. He just likes beating him up. But I thought the point of this whole feud was that um, Mike Knotts injured Evan Bourne. And Evan Bourne was, Ray's best, was one of Ray's closest friends. And then after he injured Evan Bourne, because it was an accident, he brutally beat him up by the leg. And that's why I, I've thought for three months now, that's why they've been feuding. Because Ray's mad that he beat up Evan Bourne. But then at the Elimination Chamber, the King says, yeah, we found out that Mike Knox is feuding with Ray because he doesn't care about, Ray doesn't bother him, he just likes to beat him up. Which makes no sense, but God, can this feud just be over already? When Evan Bourne comes back, Knox might go to Evan Bourne, I don't care, Evan Bourne is that good. Evan Bourne had a match against Bam Neely that was five minutes long, and I loved it. I, I would have given it, like, three and a half stars, and it was only five minutes long, because that that's how good Bourne is. He is the best new talent that we have. He should have won, in my opinion, he should have won Rookie of the Year. Even though I know he already won High Flyer, he should have won Rookie of the Year for uh, the Observer. But I didn't make the rules. Oh, uh, or not the Observer. I know I know for the PWI, it was Joe Henning. Who was it for the Observer? Comment on that. Who won Rookie of the Year for the Wrestling Observer? Because I, I, I don't think it was Evan Bourne, but I could be wrong. Um, Alina defeats Beth. Even though Beth didn't only really have both shoulders down. 
but she gets the win nonetheless. Contains her title. Um, the Funks are officially in the Hall of Fame. They will be inducted by Dusty, which I totally agree with. And um, so if you on the phone, I'll get to this later, talking, you better come over here, you better come over here. So in, during the match, and afterwards, after Legacy comes and beats up Shane McMahon in the unsanctioned fight, Randy Orton RKO Stephanie. And that's how the thing ends, him going crazy. Like, exactly the same thing when he did, after he just kicked Shane, he RKO Stephanie. Like, when he kicked Vince, he had the entire look of, whoa, 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 whoa. He did the same thing after he RKO Stephanie, that exact same look. Um, I heard that the guy on the phone was supposed to be Triple H. Because, you know, Triple H and Stephanie, you know, they're together, la, la, la. Or maybe they'll just openly say it, or maybe Triple H says, you know, after the divorce, he's still part of the family, whatever. And that Triple H is supposed to be the guy that's supposed to take on Orton's. However, like I said, Seven Story Magnet sent me that uh, that text, something about Vince trying to, uh, something with Vince and Orton at Mania. That's another possibility. But he also said that it might it's not that reliable, but it is from his uncle or something who works in WWE headquarters. But like I said, he said it's not even that true. He's not so sure yet because WWE could change anything like that. Before WrestleMania 10, Lex Luger was supposed to win the title. But um, he accidentally got drunk. Well, he didn't accidentally get drunk. He got drunk. He went on the camera. And by accident, he actually revealed that he's going to win the title the next day and then lose it to Brett. And because of that, WWE, the day before, had to make um, Brett, uh, had to make Luger win by, uh, by uh, DQ. Therefore, he doesn't win the title. Then Yokozuna would fight Brett later in the night. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much it. Also, I'm going to give a review of Milk. Um, I officially seen every Best Picture movie. I still want to see The Wrestler before the Oscars because he's a front runner for the Best Actor. Milk was very, very good. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad how much, how much criticism they took in the 70s. Police were beating them up. They were killing them just because they wanted to. Ah, I felt so bad. And it was, it was sad because, like, they're beating them up because... Because the fun of it, he even said, the cops, you know, they came and they beat us up for the fun of it. But it didn't stop us. One of my favorite scenes, when his boyfriend, when Harvey Milk's boyfriend, they break up because he doesn't want to be part of the politics anymore. Because he, he ran, for gun, ran for supervisor so many times. And then in the end, they have a meeting and he goes, I thought you quit politics. And he goes, I quit politics, but I'll never quit the movement. That This, to me, is James Franco's best serious role. I still think Pineapple Express is best because of the comedy. But this is his best serious role in a movie. Um, it was very good. I still like Slumdog Millionaire as my favorite, but this is a close second, along with Frost Nixon. Um, then The Reader, and Ben Button was great. It was just really long. Come on, no one wants to see a three-hour movie. Like I said, I want to see The Wrestler before the Oscars, because he is a front runner to win the uh, Best Actor Award. And uh, I think I'm done for the day. I'm Big Rat. Three, ten, out. Peace.